So we anneal wire to make it softer and more malleable, easier on our hands to work with, easier to shape. So this is a piece of 18 gauge that's come off the spool, 18 gauge round, dead soft wire, and you can see it's, it's quite pliable. It's bright, it's natural copper, so it's not coated, it's just off, off of the spool from Rio Grande. And I am not an affiliate, I'm just trying to give you good source and good information. I am learning from their reference videos also, so I will reference them in the description and put links for you if you want to uh, watch what I watched as well. I'm conveying what I learned to you in my version of it. This is the same 18 gauge round copper wire that's been annealed. And you can see here, as I bend the end, it's quite pliable. I mean, it takes hardly anything to bend it. And I can get really tight, graceful motion out of it. And I can really tighten down my coils and such with just my hands. And, and that was very easy to do. So it allows you to make some beautiful, elegant, uh, tight, tight lines and just in general, it's easier on your hands, right? When the wire gets short and I'm always like, get that plier because it gets harder to work. Well, after you anneal it, um, I would still get the plier, but you can see how much softer it, it truly is. So if I tried to do the same with the 18 gauge that's not been annealed, I could get similar results, but I think you can see how much harder it is for me to turn this wire that's not been annealed. You can see the pressure of my fingers, you can see how much further it's digging into my thumb as I push against it, versus how much easier it is to take, you know, this one down to a, a very tight, tight, uh, tight bit. Okay. So anyway, there's some advantages to using fire. The way I prepare wire is in these very tight little coils. I use my soldering brick. I'm on a fireproof surface. I have my quenching pan with water right next to me. And uh, I get these, you know, pre-coiled in about five or seven feet. And then I, I just go through the process of heating all of them. I also have, I also have to the right hand side here, my crock pot full of pickle. What I use for pickle is white vinegar. It's about a cup of white vinegar and a couple tablespoons of salt. It's not an exact measure, but it works quite fine. I don't use the um, acids, and you can read up on that, but once we heat up the metal, it'll, it'll go to black. It'll oxidize all the way to black, and it's, you know, pretty tough stuff to get off. So I, I keep a jar of the, the pickle pot over there heated and uh, you just throw this in there after you've annealed the wire and it'll it'll blast all of the fire scale off the metal and this metal's been cleaned it's been hanging out for a couple of days so it it looks dirty again and you know but but it'll polish up just like your regular copper um, and I have some brass in here as well some jewelers brass all right so I'm gonna start by showing you why uh, we can we coil up wire this way for annealing. Okay, so I'm gonna make an example here of this little coil of 26 gauge round copper wire. When we set a flame to it, so I like to tighten it all up like this so that when we pass flame over it, it has the opportunity to heat evenly all around the coil. I'll do that until I get to the appropriate color 
and then I'll flip the coil if needed and I'll pass a couple of times around to make sure that it's heated on both sides evenly. You'll never touch it with your fingers after that. Certainly we'll handle it with pliers and it'll go into the quench. If we try to anneal wire that looks like this, what potentially is going to happen is some of these frayed, you know, straggly ends here might burn off and some of this up here might not reach full temperature before this burns away. So for a little wire, you know, it's it's almost quite important that you bundle it up this way so that uh, you get a nice even temperature if you want to even do your littler wires. Mostly I anneal the bigger wires, but it's this kind of the same principle. Uh, where it might not burn off 18 gauge, what might happen is that all of this out here um, may heat differently than some of, you know, the wire that is tighter tighter together and stragglies, you know, would heat differently. So you'd have an uneven um, heating of this wire, which means that some of it might be softer than others. Some of it might even have gone to brittle, uh, whereas some of it might not have even reached annealing temperature. Okay, so we can't check temperature with a thermometer or any anything like that. At least, at least I don't. Um, we check it by color and behavior of the metal. So the first reasoning is the smaller the metal, the less time it takes to anneal. The larger the wire, the longer time it takes. It might take up to one minute. Okay, so the process I'm showing you is good for copper, jewelry brass, and sterling silver. So to anneal wire, the first thing we need to do is get a real tight coil on the wire. I pull off about maybe this probably seven feet, five feet, somewhere in there. Each of these spools is probably five to seven feet. And I wrap it into a very tight, um, tightly, tightly uh, spun coil here, just around my hands and I wrap the last little bits all the way around. If the wire isn't all touching together, it may not all heat up evenly. So we do this to make sure that we get an even, um, an even annealing, you know, even heating through the wire. So here I've, you know, woven or wound this up around my, just around my hand here. I had to do it outside the camera because I kept colliding. And I'm down to the last few inches here. So I've got my opening end there just going to hold it all together and start to come all the way around this big coil. And here at the end, just do like that. And if this one is loose, just flip it like that. If this were tiny wire, I might worry about these ends burning off. But since this is 18 gauge, I'm not really concerned about those ends burning off. So this coil is nice and tight, and this is how I like to prepare my wire for annealing. Here I'm doing a spool of 20 gauge round copper. And getting it ready for annealing. And you don't have to use this wire right away, so you just have a day where you're you got the torch out. Like today, it's it's pretty rainy, stormy, and cloudy, and it's a nice day to have the torch out. And so I get all this wire ready, and then I stash this wire over by my workbench and use it as I need it. I just cut it off like it's mini spools. All right, so there's some 20 gauge round copper. So I've got some 18 gauges. I have some 20 gauges and I have a mix of brass and copper. I've got my butane torch, it's all full, and I'm on my fire brick. Um, certainly I'm on fireproof surface and I have a mask ready to put on my face. And I'm just going to heat these wires up until they are a soft cherry pink. So you don't want them to go so hot red that they start to melt or distort. 
you just want um, you just but you do want to heat them up to about 1100 1200 degrees somewhere in there and that's usually uh, what I've learned is called you know the cherry pink color it's a little hard to see unless you have low lights but I need my lights for the camera so I'm going to do the best I can to get it on film for us and then we'll see how all that comes out so I'm going to start my torch and then I'm going to put um, some even flame to to these wires And I'm going to hold the torch so that the tip of my blue flame is touching the metal. That's the hottest part of the flame. I'm just going to do one coil at a time. Start with this brass one right here. Just moving around in a circular motion. Trying to heat it up evenly. And I think I'm starting to get close now. Wire's starting to go a little bit gray. Remember that that is scorching hot, so never pick that up with your hands. I'm going to put it into the quench, get it cooled off, and now I'm going to go over here to my pickle, and I'm going to put it in there. Got to get it turned on. The pickle um, that I use is, I use about a cup of white vinegar with about two tablespoons of salt. It's not a precise measure, but it works pretty good. And then you keep it heated up to a low temperature and that'll take all the fire scale off the wire. Okay, so I'm gonna go for annealing my second uh, coil of wire here. I'm gonna do this 18 gauge coil of copper. I'm starting to see some color change happening. I think the wire is starting to go to gray, so I'm starting to get the temperature here. You don't want to go to red hot and damage the wire, but you do want to go to cherry light pink, which I cannot see because I need the light in here for the camera. But if you can do this in low light, it'd be real easy for you to detect the color change. I think I've got it here. And I'm going to turn it over. Just hit this other side and make sure that all of the wire is heated properly so that I don't have any pieces of it that are not annealed. Okay, so I've got coil number two. Put that into the quench. That looks pretty good. 
and I can already tell that it's substantially softer. All right, that's making me happy. Put that into the pickle. And I'll go ahead and do the rest of these while you're watching. This one. I'm going to check this brass because I don't actually feel like, yeah, that didn't really get that hot. I think that other torch was getting low. So I'm going to do it again with this one. So I'm going to throw these things in the pickle. All right, so I just dropped these sticks into my pickle. And I'm actually going to pull out the wires we did previously. I am going to, um, I'm putting them just into the rinse right now, into a pan of water. But I am going to put them give them a rinse also in the uh, neutralizing solution, the baking soda solution that we that we normally do when we oxidize. So I just roll these up. I kind of let them sit in the hot pickle for a minute and clean up. And you can see the little red ends are starting to blast off. And again, that's just white vinegar and salt and a cute little tiny crock pot that I keep near my fire station here. Okay, so my coils of wire have been annealed and they are ready for me to use. And I have them, uh, you know, for several projects now in both jeweler's brass and copper in two or three different gauges here. And these turned out pretty well. So I've got these ready for use also my little balled up copper ends 